This video is sponsored by ArtGrid. Hey everyone, uh, today we are going to be shooting a spec ad for a company called Swift Cup. Mike is friends with the folks over at Swift Cup. Mike is my studio mate. Mike, come here. Sick of referring to you and not, them not seeing your face a lot. Ugh. Oh my gosh, I feel it. This part hangs off. Oh, really? Yeah. There you go. <laughs> this is Mike. Mike is one of my best friends, studio mates. Uh, we are going in together on commercial work this year. That's why we bought the C200s. That's why we're shooting stock footage. That's why we went on that trip and shot the Teton video and all that good stuff. Today we're shooting a spec ad for Swift Cup. Swift Cup is an instant coffee brand. Mike has already done work with them. And when I saw that ArtGrid reached out to me, wanted to do this sponsored video with um, stock footage, I figured we could incorporate some sort of spec ad at home in this kind of environment. Did you want to say something? <laughs> I just like brought you in here. <laughs> this is Mike's face. Let's break it down shot by shot. Let's break it down now shot by shot. Yeah. Let's break it down now shot by shot. Let's break it down now. Shot. This whole sequence shot in the bedroom and the kitchen was shot on our Canon C200 and it was all shot in raw. Shot number one, uh, we decided to go to my bedroom at first to get this idea of me waking up in the morning uh, as the actor, as the person making the coffee, and in my bedroom in the morning, uh, the sunlight usually peeks through the blinds and pours onto the wall of our room, but it was the middle of the day when we shot this, so we wanted to figure out how we could motivate light through those blinds. At first, we just draped the blinds over the light. We were using a Godox SL200W, and it wasn't really achieving what we wanted, uh, so we started moving the light around in different directions and realize that if we bounce the light at full power into the window, it reflected uh, what would we would assume to be a large uh, light source and gave us that look on the wall um, through the blinds to make it look like the sun was peeking through the blinds like it was morning. So Mike was just handheld on this first shot across the room. We're very strategic about how we wanted the composition to be with lines being nice and uh, framing. He just kind of worked around me uh, shot by shot after that. So he stood on top of the bed for this next part uh, going handheld straight down as I continued to wake up and then we set the C200 on the ground literally just put it on the ground this is something I love about having a cinema camera is you can just place it on the ground and get angles like this so we set it down on the ground shot it at 1.8 set our focus first uh, where my foot was going to be and I made a note of where I wanted my foot to land and then when I got up I put my foot in that spot and it was right in the focal plane that we had set it to. There were actually a lot of clips we didn't use from this sequence, but we basically took every angle that we were shooting from and shot the sequence through um, from start to finish. Uh, that whole section of me waking up or getting out of the bed. So I had a lot of things to pick and choose from to make this sequence what it ended up being. So there was a lot of footage that we didn't use at all, uh, but gave me the ability to cut in different ways. Like for example, from the first clip to the second clip, my hand, my right hand was on my face over my eyes and I cut from my exact arm motion in my hand over my eyes to the second clip, me doing the exact same thing for continuity purposes. Next, we kind of took a long time setting up this shot. We really wanted the composition to be good and I'm really happy with how it ended up turning out. We got the whole kitchen island in the frame at the bottom. Uh, our lines on right and left are looking great. Um, and I like when lines kind of meet in the corners of a frame. It's a very split second shot in the sequence, so it doesn't seem that significant, but if you're paying that close attention to each shot, uh, it just makes the viewing experience that much better. Then we just started breaking down the whole sequence shot by shot of how we wanted to get the coffee ready. So then we actually placed the C200 on my shelf across from the Swift Cup and the mugs. And I walked into frame grabbing the box and the mug. And then we did about half a dozen to 10 takes of me tossing the box onto the table and placing the mug. 
Uh, we had dedicated spots. I had an eye on a, a certain section of wood where I wanted to place the mug. And so we just did a bunch of different tries until we got the one that we felt was appropriate. After that, we put the C200 on a tripod and got this composition of the kettle. I wanted to cut off the bottom of the kettle and focus more on the water being poured into the kettle and uh, let that be the focus of the shot while composing it so that it was centered and fit well within the frame. Then we used the 50 millimeter uh, on the C200 on a tripod and just went really tight on the flames coming on, turning on as the burner uh, was turned on. On this shot specifically with the burner, I keyframed in a, a digital push-in uh, to bring focus into the sound of the burner because that's where the sound design of the burner starts to get louder and louder and it cuts to the next shot where I very intentionally wanted this upward angle of me kind of playing around with the mug waiting for the water to warm up and then to just kind of turn into this dream sequence of realizing what went into making this instant coffee. Swift Cup is a very high quality instant coffee company and so I really wanted to communicate in this short that they go above and beyond to actually produce instant coffee in a very similar, very close way to quality coffee and how that's made in like third wave coffee stores today. And I felt like this sequence of me kind of staring at the cup and thinking this is how this product uh, came to be. The next part is all stock footage and it wouldn't have been possible without our sponsor today, Artgrid. All the shots that were downloaded and placed into this short came from Artgrid. We scoured through all of their coffee collections, all of these crazy things that I never thought I could actually have my hands on until I got a subscription with something like Artgrid to be able to create something like this. And you have the option with your plan to download footage at either HD, 4K, log, and or raw. So just tons of options. There are other stock footage websites that make you pay individually for each clip that you wanna purchase, but what's amazing about Artgrid, it's just a monthly subscription and you get access to literally all of their library. So for someone like me who's a YouTuber or creating content for Patreon, wedding filmmaker, documentaries, if you're making films all the time and you need supplemental things, it's a no-brainer to have something like Artgrid. Whether it's an establishing shot for a wedding or a documentary or something like a spec ad here where you want to take someone to a different part of the world where you obviously can't go or so it's something you can't do. <laughs> you have access to footage like this to be able to enhance your story and tell the story that you need to tell. Now it's awesome that a lot of this stock footage was shot in log because it gave me the versatility to change contrast and color and exposure and temperature so that I could unanimously make this sequence look uniform and look similar to the footage that we had already shot in the bedroom in the kitchen. Every single shot through this sequence was taken from our grid until we get to this part. This section we decided to put two legs of the tripod on the kitchen island and one on a chair behind it and Mike stood up on that chair to hold the camera still to get this top-down shot very janky but it worked uh, we did a handful of tries of me attempting to rip the Swift Cup package which was unsuccessful at first <laughs> and then we succeeded uh, really excited with how this turned out very quick and we used the uh, scratch audio from the C200 and the Rode MTG 4 Plus to get that ripping sound right in the sequence next I went to my microwave and got the circular dolly, the circular, uh, is some old lady's name, <laughs> the little spinny thing, placed it on the kitchen island and the coffee cup on top of the Lazy Susan so that in this shot, Mike spun the Lazy Susan I approached the cup and poured the Swift Cup instant coffee into the mug. On the side to light it, we used a Godox SL200W with a vertical diffusion box. Yeah? This thing. So that the line on the cup was an actual line instead of just a blob of light like this huge softbox would do. Lastly, we stood in front of this enormous softbox, uh, blew out the back with white, silhouetted the cup and uh, Mike pouring water into the cup. And then I superimposed stock footage from Artgrid onto the cup to create this like double exposure type shot where the the instant coffee granules were floating around in the water while the water is being poured into the mug so just this really cool climactic ending shot to then ending with me just enjoying the instant cup of coffee something we were really intentional about in the process of filmmaking for this sequence was turning off the ac making sure my place was as quiet as it could be so that we could use the scratch audio in the sequencing for this short Plus, I added a bunch of sound design from one of my favorite websites called Zapsplat, 
and Artlist, Artgrid's sister company that also has sound effects. So that was really cool to throw in there um, for every single clip that I used with the stock footage to enhance the feeling of going through that dream sequence. Some conclusions. One, community. Community is so important. To be able to make stuff like this and to be creative and to even have an idea of doing a spec ad, I wouldn't be able to do it to this capacity by myself. So having Mike there was so pivotal um, in the process of being creative and executing this project. Two, pursue brands that you're passionate about. Mike loves Swift Cup. He wanted to reach out to them, see if he could make content for them. He shot photos for them. He did all sorts of content for them. And it gave us the idea to use their brand for this video to make another short. Number three, make things. Uh, you're never gonna have a portfolio or be able to land other jobs if you don't make things now to pursue more work later. Four, leverage every part of the creative process to make money. Five different ways I'll be making money from this shoot. One, YouTube ad revenue might make like, I don't know, 50 bucks off of this. It's still money. Two, this is a sponsored video by Artgrid, so we're getting paid to make it. Three, we could use this for future stock footage if we want to give it to something like Artgrid. Four, this is a portfolio piece for future work um, in order to land more work in the future for clients that would want something like this. And finally, we will pitch this short to Swift Cup and see if they would like to purchase it. It's always good to leverage this kind of creative filmmaking to make money for yourself, to support yourself, to make more films in the future. I hope that was really helpful for you guys. Let me know if you have any questions down below. As always, lean into what makes you different. Love you guys, my squad fam. Peace, see ya. I haven't said squad fam in a while. <laughs> Later. That's some wicked hot fire content right there.